November. Morning. There's a toilet roll and a toilet brush by the track today. How did that get there? Maybe it was left by the railway workers, but that can't be right. Then I think maybe it was put there on purpose by him to humiliate, to teach me a lesson. I think of the bar of Karamak in my pocket, but it's too early for that. It's been three days, three days without the taste of sugar. I must be strong. A toilet roll and a toilet brush. Why? Just there by the edge of the track. My mother used to say I had an overactive imagination before hitting me with a fish slice. I can still hear the sound of the slap against bare flesh. The train trawls along here past factories, shops, houses and other places. It's strange to think this is my last journey on this line. Has to be. The train usually slows at this point, but not today. They must have finally fixed that sodding signal. It's here, where a long row of Victorian houses sits square to the track that my heart begins to race, and my face turns a shade of red with shame, a place where the shit really hit the fan. The little back gardens slope up towards the track, and as we approach number 52, the memory of that late summer day is still vivid. It's why I can't do this journey any more. Can't keep looking at the scene of the crime, day in, day out. I try not to look, but I can't help it. I'm drawn to it. The garden, the bedroom, the bathroom. All familiar, all soiled by a terrible event. My boss had asked me if I wanted to join him and his family and a number of work colleagues for a barbecue one Sunday afternoon. I said yes, but was nervous, as I don't go to many social things. On the way there, I'd eaten six caramacs. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I needed to steady my nerves. I was high on sugar, but all was going well. Plenty of food and drink, and I seemed to be a hit with his wife and kids. I felt great, carefree even, when suddenly I felt the urge to fart. I wandered to the end of the garden out of harm's way when I let rip. It was delivered with such force that I managed to follow through and poo my pants. I made my excuses and trying my best to walk normally I went inside to find the bathroom. I cleaned myself up, but I didn't know what to do with my soiled pants. I panicked, stuffing them under a bed in the nearest bedroom. I left soon after making up some excuse for my speedy exit. On the way home, I cleaned out my supply of caramac, trying to bury the memory of the afternoon. But it didn't work. <laughs> I remember that all my clothes, including pants and socks, have name labels, a throwback to boarding school. So it was just a matter of time before the horrible truth would come out. A week went by and nothing happened. I began to relax. Maybe they couldn't read the label, but there it was. One Monday morning, a bag containing my soiled episode placed on my chair at work. So this is my last day. I managed to get a job closer to home and won't need to do this journey anymore. Apart from tonight, of course, but going back, that's not so bad. Being on the other side of the line, it's harder to see number 52. My hand slips into my pocket. I can feel the soft red wrapper. Sod it. I'll have one. Just the one. It's my last day, after all. Mm -hmm.